This video is sponsored by Parade. More on them in a little bit. Welcome back to the series where we are profiling the people who exploited Jesse Lee Ward during her illness and unfortunate death. This is part four of a multi-part series, so if you haven't watched the previous parts, you probably should. Actually, I implore that you do. However, these can all be watched out of order, so if you want to stay here and finish this video and then move on to the other parts afterwards, do that. <laughs> I wanted to end this series profiling the people who Jessie Lee kept closest in her life. We're talking her inner circle, her friends. While most of the people that we've covered so far are people that Jessie Lee paid a lot lot of money to. The people we're talking about today are more so in her life for the recognition they get from being in Jesse Lee's inner circle. And as we'll see in a minute here, all of these people definitely had a lot to gain from Jesse Lee Ward's illness and death. Jesse Lee was surrounded by people who took advantage of her, like her neighbor Loka, who lives in the same apartment building as she did and I guess wound up keeping multiple chairs of hers? He also helped keep Jesse Lee's accelerator coaching program going after her death. I'm not sure if he got any compensation for doing this, but at the very least, he's quite well known by people who follow Jesse Lee. And I don't even think he's a network marketer. I think he's just like some motivational speaker. And then you have just disgusting actions done by people like Tara Lambert, who I believe was a direct recruit of Jesse Lee. Now, trigger warning, the picture I'm about to put on the screen might trigger some people because it's very obvious how bad Jessie Lee was in her final moments of life, just based on this picture alone. Now, it's not gory or gross or anything. It's just a picture of her hand, but it's incredibly jaundiced, like very, very yellow. So, okay, here it comes. So Tara posted this picture of her holding Jessie Lee's hand in the hospital. She'd been visiting with Jessie Lee on September 15th, which is the day before she died, which is when this picture was probably taken. I'm not an expert on cancer, but from what I understand at the end stages of cancer, the way someone's life ends is basically by cancer making its way to all the other organs and just shutting them down. So it appears from that image that Jesse Lee was most likely suffering from liver failure. Now, is that any of our business? No. But did Tara kind of make it our business? <laughs> Yeah. Like at the very least, can you make the picture black and white? <laughs> or like just don't post it at all? I will say that there was some speculation on Reddit that people were saying like, oh, that's definitely a post-mortem hand. She was definitely dead when she took this picture, which is disturbing and horrifying if it were true. However, from what I've seen, Tara left the hospital before Jesse Lee died. This picture would have been taken before Jesse Lee passed away, but just in extremely critical condition. And speaking of people posting things that they should shouldn't. There was a trend of people posting their final messages, like text messages and DMs and stuff with Jesse Lee Ward, and most of them were just exchanging I love yous or other non-consequential types of messages, except for this one. It was posted by someone named Season Johnson. She was a close friend of Jesse Lee's. I don't believe she was in Prove It, but I think she's in doTERRA, <laughs> so that's great. A anyway, Jesse Lee reached out to Season for medical advice often. And I don't think Season is a medical professional, but her whole like online persona is dedicated to helping children who have cancer utilize alternative treatments. Wow, what a gem. <laughs> anyway, she posted her final messages with Jessie Lee, where Jessie Lee tells her that the doctors say she only has days to live. Season responds with, JL, they aren't God. They can't tell you that. And then Jessie Lee tells her that she's terrified, which I'm sure she was, but she kept up this public public facade that she was confident and she was healing and she was beating cancer. For Season to show up and basically be like, hey guys, I know Jessie Lee seemed really strong to the rest of you towards the end there, but really behind closed doors, she was so scared. Like she was on her deathbed and wow, look at how weak she was. Like that's just what I see when I see these messages being shared. It does nothing to honor the version of Jessie Lee that she was trying to portray to the rest of the outside world. Thanks to Season that allusion illusion is totally smashed. And now we know that Jessie Lee was terrified when she died. So that's great. Great job. And then you have Brittany Anderson who was posting disgusting sh 
like this after Jessie Lee died, suggesting that her death was all according to plan. What plan? Whose plan? Certainly not Jessie Lee's plan, since she planned to beat cancer holistically, and clearly that didn't go to plan. No, please, seriously, Brittany, explain to us whose plan this was, who made this plan, because it did not serve Jesse Lee at all. It only served you people. Well, yeah, the people that I just named and so many others said and did some nasty things in the wake of Jesse Lee's death. I'm gonna be spending most of the time in this video profiling Avi Ram, which was Jesse Lee's boyfriend, Kelsey Ray, who was another friend of Jesse Lee Ward, and also Courtney Shepard, who was Jesse Lee's stalker. <coughs> I mean best friend. I was stalking her. We'll get into all that, but first I just wanna stop to thank the sponsor of today's video, Parade. Hey, I take underwear very seriously. Ever since I've had babies and my belly skin got flabby, <laughs> underwear just doesn't fit the way it used to. So let me tell you a little story. Years ago, I bought some random underwear from some obscure Amazon seller. They were soft and breathable and stretchy, but most importantly, they were seen seamless, like raw cut edge. So like there wasn't a hem around the edges, you know what I mean? There wasn't like a constricting band around the waist. So like six months ago, I went back on Amazon and for the life of me, I could not find them. That listing is just like wiped from the internet. It is not on Amazon anymore. I bought some different brands that used like the same keywords. They were not the same. They were not what I was looking for. I figured, you know, I guess I just have to live with something else. Until Parade came into my life. When I tell you I wanted to cry tears of joy when I was unboxing this one specific pair of underwear they sent me, dude. Okay, so this pair is called the Invisible Sculpt Hip Huggers, which you can also get the same underwear in thong and high rise styles if those are more of your thing. But this pair of underwear is exactly what I was looking for. I'm wearing them right now, but I'll show you what it looks like under super tight leggings because this is just the most comfortable underwear on the planet. And it's basically invisible when you wear it under leggings. Let me show you my butt. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you see a panty line? Cause I don't. And you wouldn't even think that I don't have a strip of fabric between my butt cheeks, but I am wearing underwear. See, they're right there. <laughs> Your girl isn't into wearing strips of fabric in between my butt cheeks. That's cool if you like thongs and G-strings and stuff. It's not for me. I want comfort. So this gives me everything I need. No panty line and comfort. Doesn't feel like I'm even wearing anything. They're great. Aside from the specific pair of underwear, there's a lot of things I like about Parade. First of all, inclusivity. They feature sizes from extra small all the way up to 3XL, and they have bralettes that go up to an F cup. And when you go to their website, you're gonna be met with pictures of real bodies. They're not photoshopped and airbrushed. The models have stretch marks and love handles. They're gender inclusive also. They have male models and gender neutral styles. If sustainability is important to you, Parade uses only reclaimed, recycled, responsible, renewable, or regenerative materials in their products. And they have a sustainability pledge on their website that tells you where all of their fabrics come from if that's something that's important to you. And then of course there's affordability. Parade is incredibly affordable. For example, the underwear that I'm talking up right now, <laughs> you can get them three pairs for $25. Well actually, really, you can get them cheaper because Parade is giving you, my audience, a special deal. Make sure you visit yourparade.com slash sav40 or simply enter the code sav40 at checkout to get 40% off site-wide. But anyway, buy this underwear. Buy <laughs> this underwear. <laughs> It has positively impacted my life. And I don't care how dramatic that sounds. It is my favorite underwear, hands down. I don't see a reality in which you wouldn't love them too. So thank you to Parade for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about the scummy people who took advantage of Jesse Lee Ward. First, let's start with Avi Ram. He was Jesse Lee's last boyfriend. He actually didn't appear in pictures and lives with her for the first few months of their relationship. And while at first it just seemed like he didn't didn't want to be in the spotlight. We later found out that this choice was likely because he's actually married with children. The story goes that Avi Ram lived with his wife and kids in California and then went to Texas to work to provide for the family. While he was there, he met Jesse Lee and basically cut off ties with his family to pursue a life with Jesse Lee. Now, they did meet on a dating app, so 
I mean, it sounds to me like Avi Ram went to Texas with the intention to cheat on his wife in the first place, but then he ended up meeting a beautiful millionaire. So then it turned into more than just a hookup from a dating app. Jesse Lee was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer pretty early in their relationship, but he stuck by her. And many speculated that was because he saw dollar signs in that will, honey. But from what we've heard from multiple sources, Jesse Lee didn't actually have a will or she didn't finish it or at the very least she didn't sign it, which has left her estate in legal purgatory basically. Please understand that this part of the video is just kind of pieced together based on things I've heard through the grapevine from trustworthy sources, along with conversations I've seen on her subreddit. I may not have every detail correct here, but I've done my best to present this information as clearly as I possibly can. I'm also not an expert on all this legal will stuff, you know, so <laughs> please excuse me, but I'm doing my best. From what I understand, her will is currently being fought over by her family, and it's probably going to be stuck in probate court for the foreseeable future. That being said, what she did finish of her will did not include Abi Ram, which is great news. Probably the most responsible thing she has done this whole time is not putting her boyfriend in her will. There's this TikTok that she posted on June 13th, 2023, about three months before her death. This TikTok is probably gonna trigger some of you guys. It's probably gonna make you upset, but it's Jessie Lee talking about her will. And notice how she says that her beneficiaries are her brother and nephew, not her parents, not her friends, and certainly not Avi Ram. I don't have a will, um, but I have a lot of stuff, a lot of assets. Um, I'm very blessed to have a lot of businesses um, and a lot of wealth. And um, all I'm, the only reason I'm crying is because I'm filling out my uh, questionnaire for my will <laughs> and I'm listing beneficiaries and stuff and like, I really don't feel like I'm dying, right? Like I'm not dying. Yet here I have to fill this out and I wish I had filled it out years ago <sighs> before any of this happened because then maybe it would have been a little less this. I feel better and I talk to you guys. <laughs> I didn't talk to anybody. I talked to myself. Hi, guys. All I have so far as a beneficiary is my big brother and his son. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. <gasps> I also saw that it was reported that Avi Ram was being paid by Jesse Lee to help onboard people into her Boss Lee Accelerator coaching program. I'm not sure how much she was paying him, but I'm sure it was at least an incentive to stick around. Whatever the reason, whether it be money, opportunity, convenience, vacations, other material things, or true love, I guess we'll never know for sure. But Avi Ram did find a few ways to benefit from her death. Mainly, he lived in her penthouse apartment through the end of November, presumably because the rent had been prepaid. I doubt he paid to extend his stay there, considering the person who had been paying for that lifestyle was no longer there. But hey, he got two and a half months worth of allegedly free rent in a penthouse. And there are a few of Jesse Lee's belongings that we've been able to pinpoint and confirm that Avi Ram kept. Least importantly, there's this blanket. But more specifically, remember that $2,500 juicer that we had in the last video? Yeah, Avi Ram seems to have that. He also has one of her paintings, as shown in this exact same screenshot and a few others. But that's not even the worst part of all of this. On November 3rd, 2023, a Reddit user posted this screenshot to Jesse Lee's subreddit. Yup. Avi Ram joined, prove it! Looking back at that video that I just had on screen, you may have noticed that he also has shelves of prove it products as well. Did he keep the inventory that Jesse Lee had stockpiled? I mean, she famously would go live while packing orders, so we know she always had a lot of inventory on hand. I think it would be safe to say that Avi Ram kept all of that as well. Just writing the coattails of your dead girlfriend for as long as possible, huh? I mean, could he be any more slimy? Speaking of prove it, I just want to touch on this real quick, but there's a lot of questions about what happened to Jesse Lee's downline. It was rumored that it would roll up to Lisa Grossman, who was Jesse Lee's upline. And this is pretty common in MLMs. Like if someone leaves the organization, they just roll it up to the next person. However, we know of at least one member of the empire. Her name is Sydney Money, who is now in this girl's downline who calls herself, I'm boss Brie. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> so it seems like Prove It is starting to now kind of 
divvy up Jesse Lee's organization. It's also been speculated that Lisa Grossman doesn't even want to have Jesse Lee's entire organization roll up to her as her direct downline because she's just not like Jesse Lee as a leader at all. She's like an older lady. She doesn't have like this huge online presence or anything. She's not nearly as aggressive and loud and obnoxious as Jesse Lee was. She just doesn't really have that same personality type to lead such a large and active organization. From what I can tell, it's not as simple as just a quick roll up to Lisa. There is more to this topic, but I'm gonna be saving it for a little bit later in the video. Anyway, I only bring this up now to say that it's not like Avi Rom is now running the empire. <laughs> it's not like he like just completely took over Jesse Lee's team. By the way, did I mention this? Jesse Lee's team was called the empire. Like that's what she called it. So if there was any confusion there, sorry. <laughs> It doesn't appear as though any members of the Empire chose Avi Ram as their new upline. But what he very clearly is doing is using the hey I was Boss Lee's boyfriend card to get himself ahead. I think he's expecting people to join his downline to feel like they're part of prolonging Jesse Lee's network marketing legacy. At the very least he's definitely not starting on the same even playing field that every MLM distributor likes to say exists exists that totally does not exist. It's really interesting because the average person who just signs up for an MLM doesn't get the opportunity to just hop on a bunch of Instagram lives with people right out the gate. They usually have to prove themselves first and then after that they get to hop on lives as a notable person in the industry after they've like proven themselves I guess. Avi Ram didn't have to go through all of that. Him just being in close proximity to Jesse Lee was enough for all of these notable Prove It distributors, all of which seem to know Jesse Lee personally, to get him to go live with them and talk about the opportunity. And that's just further proof that plenty of people start out in MLMs with a higher likelihood of prestige and success than others. It's not an even playing field. There are multiple factors that contribute to success in these companies. And meanwhile, you have lives like this one girl, Sholana, I guess is her name, who is also a personal friend of Jesse Lee. And they're basically using Avi Ram to say, look, men take these products too. I'd say she's looking to help him build his team by appealing to men and convincing them to join. Like you said that you want some to get some men, uh, men perspective. Right. Well, like I've told him, I'm sorry, I'm on Facebook over here too. They hear from, hear from me all the time. And when I do have like other Q and A's, it's usually other females, understandably, including myself. Yeah. So I was like, I want them to know that there are males that also take it. And I think it would be nice for other people that might have males in their life or just to get a different perspective on how it has benefited you. Most people who join an MLM do not get an opportunity like this. Avi Ram is also out here posting pictures with Jesse Lee's most recognizable friends in her inner circle. Avi Ram attended Prove It's annual Epic Awards night. He has a leg up on everybody and he knows it and he is milking it for all he can. I'm not sure how successful he's been so far. Usually when we have MLM distributors rank up or something like that, they'll post an announcement and be like, look at me, yay, I got a promotion. And <laughs> like, they'll post it and the uplines will post it and everyone will share it and be like, congratulations. Congratulations. Very culty. But Avi Ram hasn't posted anything like that. Not that I've seen anyway. And I don't think I've seen anyone else post anything like that. But what he has been posting is just plenty of your standard cringy network marketing motivational reels. Another weird thing is that before Jesse Lee died, Avi Ram's Instagram, I'm pretty sure it was private, first of all. But even then, it was fairly inactive. Like he would go months without posting anything. But as soon as Jesse Lee died, we're talking like the day she died, suddenly he started posting a lot more and he has amassed nearly 13,000 followers. I guess we'll see where he goes with this. I think his intentions are pretty clear and it is extremely obvious to me and probably many others how he was able to benefit from his close proximity to Jesse Lee Ward. Now, I'd like to move on to our next subject here, Kelsey Ray. She's kind of an honorable mention, but trust me, the stuff that she was posting after Jesse Lee's death is wild. If there was an online course about how to make your friend's death 
about you, 101. Kelsey Ray would be the one to develop that and then probably shill it out for 500 bucks a pop. <laughs> now, Kelsey Ray was very close to Jessie Lee. She was a direct recruit of hers. She was on the infamous Columbia trip, which we won't be covering here. If you haven't watched my top 10 MLM fails of 2023 video, spoiler alert, but that Columbia trip made it to number one. So I summarized that whole thing in that video. It's a wild ride, so if you want more information on this Columbia trip, it's there. I'll have it linked down below. But anyway, yeah. Kelsey Ray was in Jesse Lee's close inner circle. And because of that, she received a lot of opportunities while Jesse Lee was alive. Like lavish vacations and clout. Lots and lots of clout. Like, at least Jesse Lee had some charisma and personality. I mean, I guess that's arguable. There are some people who could not stand Jesse Lee. But to me, I'm like, it's not something that can be argued to say that Jesse Lee definitely had something unique about her. Because even when she was being absolutely terrible, she was still entertaining to watch. And her content was, like, easily consumable because she did have a sort of charisma about her. Kelsey Ray cannot say that. She mixes her key tones in a bikini every day in order to hold on to attention and engagement, which must work for some of her audience, but for most of us in the anti-MLM world, it's just the worst kind of cringe. But without her daily bikini ketone mixing videos, I can't imagine that she'd have an audience outside of her downline, because she's always angry and negative in every piece of content I've ever watched of hers. And she has the personality of a potato. Anyway, I just want to show you guys the series of events that came out of Kelsey Ray during the last few days of Jessie Lee's life and the aftermath of her death. So you may remember these pictures of a bunch of people in the hospital waiting room looking way too happy. I shared this picture in one of the previous installments of the series and there's a few other pictures as well and I believe that these were all originally shared by Kelsey Ray. So yeah, strike one, using Jessie Lee's death as a social gathering and photo op. Cool. On the day Jessie Lee died, Kelsey Ray went live on her Facebook doing a get ready with me in Texas. She posted this live at 7 41 a.m. Pacific time, and I got confirmation of Jesse Lee's death around 11 a.m. Pacific time. But I'm here in Texas because one of my really great friends and mentor um, got diagnosed with stage four cancer, and uh, she's been healing and doing really well. And so, um, as far as any kind of updates, I'm not going to be giving any updates on her health. Um, that's just not my place to do so. So, if you don't follow her, you probably should. Her name is Jesse Lee. And so that is why I'm in Texas. Um, so I had to do an emergency trip here to offer her support and energy um, throughout her having a hard time right now. Under the circumstances, it's actually really sad, but nonetheless, I'm just grateful to have known her and to be um, present while here, giving her my energy and my and my, um, my good vibes. So of course you can't get mad at her for not being able to see the future, but I think it's important to just show how in denial these people were, which isn't entirely their fault, let's be fair there. Kelsey Ray is just cheerfully brushing her hair and smiling and chatting with her followers and trying to recruit people. Four years ago, I actually came into something called exogenous ketones. If you've ever tried them, drop a yes. If you've never tried them, drop a no. And if you have it, it's totally fine. Meanwhile, I mean, I'm not gonna share it again, but remember that picture of Tara holding Jesse Lee's hand? That was taken the day before this live, also the day before she died, where Jesse Lee is just straight up bright yellow. Like, guys, things were bad. Kelsey does seem completely oblivious to that. But on that note, it's like, can we really blame her? For the record, in the last few weeks of her life, Jesse Lee posted a ton of content talking about the pain she was experiencing, but she kept saying it was because she had a kidney stone. Been in a lot of pain for the last few months, which definitely just makes me nervous all the time. Uh, still don't know if I passed a kidney stone for anyone wondering about that, but this is a cancer update. I would like to read this one story that she posted about a week before she died, just to give you an idea of some of the things that Jessie Lee was telling people. Haven't really eaten a thing in four days. I'm in so much pain, I can't explain it to you. I can only throw up and keep crying. Maybe that explains it to the general public. I don't think I'll keep coming to Cali for treatments. There's just way too many toxins. My body seriously can't handle. I want my dogs, my air doctor, my ozone, my juicer, my plants, my filtered water in my shower, and to drink, and my chemical-free home, immediately. Did I mention my dogs? The biggest mind f 
incredible cancer results. Kidney saying, oh hey, now it's our turn to shine. Rude. Doc said I'm just chronically inflamed after he gave me my good news, and I couldn't agree more. Nice to know nothing's floating around trying to kill me though. God bless. We will get through this. This week has just been great and awful, all at the same time. In other news, I'm coming back to weekly Empire calls for the whole team after getting my great news. Surprise, Shades. She said that a lot. Anyway, people in Jesse Lee's circle hung on to her every word. They believed everything that she said. And what Jesse Lee had been saying is that she was healing from cancer. And whatever discomfort that she was experiencing in that moment was totally separate wasn't cancer related at all. Less than two weeks before her death, Jessie Lee went live to tell everybody that her remaining lymph nodes were going back to normal size. And she was celebrating that her doctor told her that they would see her in six months for a follow-up scan. He said that the cancer is decreasing in my body. Many of my lymph nodes have gone back to normal. Um, there's a few hot spots that were always there. Nothing has increased. Um, he said everything in my body is going back to normal. Praise God. Oh, praise God. And he said, um, he said, oh. <laughs> he's like, just get another scan in six months and we'll see how it's going. <sighs> and for those of you who don't know, um, <sighs> when I was diagnosed in, and went to uh, MD Anderson in March, um, they told me I wouldn't live to see November. And um, now they're asking me to not get scanned for another six months because the disease is regressing so dramatically. So um, <laughs> thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for you guys who have sent really encouraging messages. I know I've had weird pains and um, my kidneys hurt or my liver or something hurts. I don't know what hurts. Um, but wow. Um, I chose not to become a prognosis. I chose to become, okay, I accept my diagnosis, but I didn't accept the fact that I was gonna be dead in October. And speaking from what I experienced during that time, there were a lot of conversations going on saying that like she clearly didn't have a lot of time left. She talked about having ascites, I think is how you say it, which is a buildup of fluid in the abdomen. And apparently it's extremely common in end stage cancer and also extremely painful. And I did just get um, a diuretic because the, I don't know how to say it, ascites, 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 that is just extra liquid in my abdomen, uh, which could be causing the pain in my back. Um, everything said to start a diuretic. So I talked to my doc, said, yes, it's a good idea. So just trying to get the extra fluid out. You can't tell because y'all don't know my body like I know my body, but like I can see how like puffer this is. Okay. So to me, this is like I feel, I tell Aviram every day, I'm like, I'm a little toad, I have a little toad belly. He's like, no, you don't. Um, but I can feel it. So just trying to like get this to go down because I can't suck anything in. I can't, you can't like, <laughs> like, you know how, <laughs> you can't do it anymore. While those of us on the outside could see things for what they really were, which was the end of a stage four cancer patient's life, those closest to her just took her word for it. She clearly wasn't dying from untreated stage four cancer. She already beat cancer. Her doctors told her so. And if you watch my last episode in the series, you'll see that her doctors were nothing but quacks and grifters. All of this is to say that I believe that Jesse Lee and every impressionable person who followed her, which was most of her audience, I think they were all in denial. So there's only so much blame that I can put on any of them for that. They lack critical thinking skills and they don't live in this reality. <laughs> Not their fault, I guess. The worst part though about Kelsey Ray's involvement in all this is the stuff that she was posting after Jesse Lee's death. If anyone milked this situation for all it was worth on social media, it was Kelsey Ray. So after Jesse Lee passed away, all of the people who were out there in Texas allegedly ransacked her apartment. Kelsey Ray spent days there posting stories and reels of her crying and crying and crying. Oh, and make sure you get that booty shot in from Jessie Lee's balcony too. Crying in her recently deceased friend's penthouse is a content gold mine. One thing I will say about Kelsey Ray is that at the very least, like it does look like she's been crying. I don't think she's like Eric Worre and Ed Milet, like trying so hard to squeeze a little tear out and like wiping away tears that aren't there. Kelsey Ray, has puffy red eyes and you can see the tears flowing. I do believe that Kelsey Ray was caught off guard by Jesse Lee's passing. I really do think that she believed everything that Jesse Lee was saying. And I think that is probably what 
influenced a lot of these tears. Just the sheer, like, shock that these people must have been in, like, oh my gosh, she actually died. But, you know, she definitely wanted to make sure that all of us saw all of those tears flowing. Oop! <laughs> Am I swelling up with tears again? Time to set up my camera on the bathroom mirror and film myself crying so I can post it to my stories. Eyes looking a little puffy. Let's post an Instagram reel. While filming yourself crying is definitely cringe, I don't know if I would call it problematic. Outside of using your friend's death for social media engagement, of course. I think there are ways to like post about someone close to you dying without using it for that social media engagement. I don't think any of these people did that properly. The most problematic things that came from Kelsey during this time go far beyond just crying on your Instagram stories, which she also did. She did that while shaking up ketones every freaking day. You know, just how Jesse Lee would have wanted. But okay, let's get into the things that I actually think were problematic. Number one, Kelsey really led the charge against Jesse Lee's ICU doctors. Shortly after her death, she posted this to her stories. The caption says, one of the reasons I can't trust all doctors. You had one job. My god, okay. First of all, the real doctors did try to give Jesse Lee Ward a fighting chance. She decided not to listen to them. And then she ended up in the ICU on her deathbed just a few months later. By the time Jesse Lee decided, oh, maybe I should get some help from modern medicine, it was too late. But no, let's blame the doctors for not being able to turn around the luck of a stage four cancer patient who did nothing that could have actually saved her. For the record, her official obituary and her family all verify that her death was caused by cancer. So shut up, Kelsey. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't take a genius to figure that out, but these people are not very smart. <laughs> She also went on Instagram rants like this one, claiming that no one knows what went on inside that hospital, but weren't you guys there? And like, sometimes I feel really angry. Like I feel like, I feel like myself wanting to find somebody to blame. Like I'm really angry at the doctors and I'm really angry at all of the, all the different doctors that may have caught something earlier or like, we don't even know. We don't, we don't exactly even know what, at the end, took her from us. I will admit she did kind of backtrack on all of this anti-doctor rhetoric a few days later, posting this video where she admits that she knew nothing about colon cancer and didn't even bother to research it. She just went off of what Jesse Lee was saying instead of looking up end of life symptoms. But not once did I ever research colon cancer or like anything about it, especially not end of life symptoms. And if I had done that, I would have been a little bit more prepared for what we're going through right now. In my opinion, the damage had already been done. She already helped spread an incredibly dangerous narrative that ultimately harms the reputation of doctors who practice modern medicine. She already contributed to the further radicalization of people who already don't trust doctors. And that kind of radicalization has literally killed people. So great job, Kelsey Ray. Oh, but then in January, she posted this slide to her Instagram stories, which I think shows that she didn't actually learn anything from all of this. And she continues to spread the narrative all over her social media that doctors aren't trustworthy to this day. But anyway, this person asked what Kelsey Ray's credentials are that qualify her to be creating workout plans and meal plans, which I guess is something that she regularly posts about. Kelsey's answer is delusional and infuriating. Kelsey writes, it really baffles me that I even attracted someone like you to my socials. I don't need a degree to share what I do that has worked for me. If you don't have enough common sense to know when to consult a doctor for your medical issues, IDK what to tell you. I use the disclaimer all the time that I'm not a medical professional. What I share is simply what it is I do. You see, that's the beauty of social media. You get to learn from other people's actual experiences, which I trust a thousand percent over a doctor who's getting paid to keep me sick. Okay, what did you learn then, Kelsey? Seems like nothing. You had one of your best friends get diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, consulted doctors, for her medical issues, decided not to listen to them, and then she died. So if you learned anything from that, it should probably be to listen to your doctors. It should be that randos on the internet are not qualified to be giving you medical advice. And then when people listen to these randos, they die. <gasps> Shocking! But she still thinks that other
other people's medical experiences and practices are more valid than a person who went to medical school for years and years. No, no, they don't know what they're talking about, but <laughs> my friend who says that they holistically cured their cancer, they're totally, yeah, they know what's up. Please, dude, you have learned nothing, Kelsey absolutely nothing. Your selective interpretation of the fabric of our reality that makes up the world that we live in is just so shrouded by personal bias and you're projecting it onto your hundreds of thousands of followers instead of, oh, I don't know, admitting that maybe you and everyone else were actually wrong about Jessie Lee and her health condition. She also made this post to Instagram basically using the fact that she allegedly saw Jessie Lee's lifeless body for sympathy and making the gruesome details of of Jessie Lee's illness and death all about her. In the caption, she wrote, As I'm in flight on my way to Dallas for the celebration of life for Jessie Lee, I'm going over so many moments in my head. The first moment I'm thinking about is walking into her hospital room and seeing her body with no soul intact. I will absolutely never forget that moment. It hurt so deeply. I didn't get to see her before she passed, but she knew I was there and that's all that matters. Another moment is our Bahamas trip where she found out she had cancer. I remember the moment she got the bad news. We all had boarded the jet on our way back to the States and she immediately went to the back room of the jet and didn't come out the whole time. We knew something was wrong. None of us knew it was that. Another memory I have is when we all took a trip to Colombia, and she mentioned there that she was experiencing prolonged bleeding and pain, but that she was okay. She knew she was okay, or so she thought. I keep replaying all of these moments in my head, and if I had just been a little more aware of what could have been happening, I feel like I would have had more memories with her still physically present. Again, so like, what did you learn then? <laughs> At one point, Kelsey Ray goes on a rampage against people for just asking questions. And by the way, it's incredibly fucking rude to ask any questions to anybody this close to what is happening. What happened? What's happening with her dogs? What's happening with her family? What happened? I thought she was okay. What is wrong with y'all? There is like, who raised you? For you to ask anybody that, anybody, for you to even, for you to even have the words come out of your mouth of what happened, there's something wrong with you. Like get the fuck off of my social media. And, then, and I'm going through my comments and people who are asking me what happened, what happened? Oh my God, no, I thought, like, get the fuck off of my comments. You are disrespectful and it's disgusting. And I don't want to be associated with people that can't even, like, comprehend how disrespectful that is. It's just so fucking wild to me. And that's another thing, too, for you to answer anybody's questions. If you're asking what happened and then if you're the person who says, oh, well, she died from cancer... Even if that were true, that is not your f***ing place because there has not ever been an official statement from the medical doctors of exactly what took her from us. And it's just so disrespectful. Listen, I understand that it is probably hurtful and painful for her to have to answer questions about a friend who had just died. I get that, but naturally, people were glued to Jessie Lee and her story for one reason or another. She had a huge audience of hundreds of thousands of people and she shared everything with them. Everything. Every last bloody disgusting thing. She posted every single part of her life online and the whole world was there to see it. She was not one to hold back on anything. And Kelsey, you know, just like you say that you were confused at her passing, so is the rest of her support base. As I mentioned before, she had a lot of people eating out of the palm of her hand and believing everything that she ever said. It makes sense that people are going to look to you, Kelsey Ray, a person who was there for answers. If she had said, you know, guys, please don't send me any questions right now. You know, I can't really handle it. I'm in a weird emotional place. Just leave me alone and let me grieve. That would have been totally different but instead she went into a confusion fueled rage at people who she I guess deemed to be unworthy of an explanation and sure she didn't owe anyone that explanation either but she made herself so available she was all over social media during this time she probably posted about this in the few days after Jessie Lee's death more than anybody else so here she is basically being the face of Jessie Lee's death 
that's kind of a weird way to put it, but she was the one who was really in the forefront. People were watching her the most because she was posting the most. And you're gonna get mad at people engaging in the things you're posting publicly online? Like, it's relevant. If you didn't want to be asked any questions, just stay off the internet and grieve on your own. But in my opinion, the worst thing that Kelsey Ray did in the aftermath of losing Jesse Lee was claiming multiple times that Jesse Lee had to die so that she could grow. No, I'm not kidding. She literally said this. Not once, not twice, not three times. She was saying it all the time. Here's a handful of examples that I was able to find of her doing and saying this unbelievably heartless narrative. Two days after Jesse Lee's passing, Kelsey Ray went live, having obviously been crying and said this ridiculousness. And she knew, she knew she had to get out of the way for other people to be as powerful, I don't know. She knew that this is what she needed to do. She knew, her soul knew, this was a part of her destiny. This is just what had to happen. And she's everywhere. She's everywhere all the time. Since this happened, I cannot tell you like how many signs of her I've gotten around me, around us, like she's everywhere all the time. And I can't wait to experience the rest of my life living with her and present with me constantly. Because that, she's here with me all the time now. I have her all the time. So that's the blessing in this. So she died for you to carry on her legacy instead of continuing to do it herself? She was only 34. How come she was unable to continue building a legacy for herself for the next, I don't know, 50 years or so? She still had plenty of life to live. Also suggesting that her death is a blessing is pretty messed up. You can choose to see it that way, Kelsey, because you're full of yourself. You're probably the most self-centered person in network marketing, honestly. But what about her real family? What about the people who feel like they lost someone? Why are you so special that she decided to die so she could bless you? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a mother out there who lost a child. There's a brother who lost a sister. There are family members who lost a family member. No mother sees the death of their child as a blessing, dude. But hey, as long as you find a way to make sure that this devastating loss benefits you, Kelsey, then it's all good. Like, does she hear herself? And then in this reel she wrote on screen, you knew you had to give space to those of us you taught how to lead. I get it now, but it still hurts. Um, I'm sorry, what reality do these people live in? Jesse Lee's entire life was about pushing her limits and trying to be the most successful version of herself that she possibly could be. Had she not gotten sick, she would still be pushing herself and scamming more people and growing and growing and growing and then running her accelerator courses and making more and more and more money for herself. She did not just decide to get sick and die so that she could get out of people's way. Jessie Lee had a personality. She was charismatic. She had that it factor, even though, you know, yeah, she used it for evil. The audacity of so many of these people to suggest that Jessie Lee, of all people, just felt bad that she was soaking up all of the spotlight and she just wanted to let someone else have a turn. That is so delusional. I don't need to know Jessie Lee to know that that is not in her personality and she would not do that <laughs> if given the choice. She would never get out of anybody's way. None of these people, no matter how much they think they have it in them, none of them will ever replace Jesse Lee. So five days after Jesse Lee passed, Kelsey Ray went live for 22 minutes in a bikini while drinking ketones. She reposted the video to her YouTube channel and she named it The Message Jesse Lee's Death Has Given Me. And it's just as bad as you probably think it is. So I'm just gonna put together a highlight reel here for you, complete with more moments of it's a good thing that she died and also selling ketones, advertising a giveaway. You can't make this stuff up. Nothing just happens, I feel like everything this thing just dots are starting to connect and so I don't know who needs to hear this message but I'm telling you right now if you're going through something that feels impossible if you're going through pain and hurt and sorrow maybe you've lost somebody or maybe she meant just as much to you and you're struggling with it I need you to know and understand that 
her, she had to go and it is a good thing and y'all know that i drink exogenous ketones right like i don't know if you know what ketones are drop a yes if you don't know what they are drop a no i know that she had to go she knew she had to go her soul the universe her soul knew she had to go she knew that if she was here she was a security blanket for a lot of us she knew if she continued to stay on this earth none of us would grow to our fullest potential her passing away has given us a drive like no other to actually step into the leadership that she knows that we have and fulfill our destiny through her journey it's just it's just weird and it's crazy and so many things are making sense. And so like, I don't know who needed to hear any of that, but I hope that you did. And I hope that you shared this and just know like I'm gonna sell ketones forever and I'm going to recruit people forever. And if you feel like there's somebody on your page that needs to hear that, then you can share this out and comment the word shared because then I can put your name into my giveaway. Six days after Jesse Lee's death, which was probably filmed on the same day as the last video we watched because she's wearing the same bikini. Anyway, Kelsey Ray posted this nasty video. She decided to take the holistic route to cure the cancer. And I firmly believe that she was on the right track to curing it. There's some details that I can't really talk about on here just yet. However, I don't just want to share with you guys me crying and being sad. She would be kicking my ass for that. I want to share with you the things that she taught me and the message that I'm receiving through this entire experience. All is according to plan. And for me, I have to believe that. It just makes sense. She was so powerful. She knew, her soul knew, God knew, the universe knew that she had to make space for other people to rise up. And just like she wanted to be everywhere all the time, she now gets that opportunity to do so. I go through waves of emotion of being sad and being numb and being angry. But right now in this very moment, I feel hopeful because I can hear her screaming to me, all is according to plan and you have to believe that. You can disguise it under hopeful music all you want, but the message that I get from all of that is that there is not room for all of you guys at the top. Despite how you all like to preach that everyone can be successful in MLM, right? But now in a morbid turn of events, there can only be one. And the only way that anyone else is gonna get a turn is if the number one person just dies. <laughs> That's the only way. Here's another instance of her implying that Jesse Lee had to die so that she and others could grow. I don't know if you guys know this, but her Nana died. Um, and like, that was like her everything. And in this podcast, she said, as it sounds, I, she needed to die so that I could step into my leadership and become the woman that I'm supposed to become. In November, she posted this story that said, the universe knew that I would have always had Jessie Lee as a safety net, and I just have to believe that her passing plays a huge part in my journey to become my true best self. She was so incredibly powerful that she had to step down so everyone else could use what she taught us to rise up. With her guidance in a different way, I will now step into the power I know I have within. I think you all should. She talks about Jessie Lee as if she were Jesus himself. She died for us is all I'm hearing. And I'll admit this could possibly be a delusional coping mechanism where she's applying a purpose to an event that truly had no purpose just to make herself feel better. But like, how can you say that without realizing how terrible that sounds? A 34 year old woman's life was cut tragically short and you're gonna make sure that that serves you? Yes, the universe absolutely revolves around you, Kelsey Ray. Everything that happens within it is all happening to benefit you exclusively. Kelsey Ray has managed to come up with a new theory of the universe. It's the Kelseyocentric theory of the universe and I hate it. And if you're watching this video and you're not Kelsey Ray, let us all rejoice together, knowing the fact that the only purpose that we serve here on earth is to benefit Kelsey Ray in one way or another. No one or nothing else, we're all just here to be part of Kelsey Ray's story. We are otherwise pointless. And Kelsey is a divine angel. Such a hero, wow. Thank you for attending How to Make Your Friend's Death All About You 101. And now we may move on to our final subject. I think the biggest train wreck of all is Jessie Lee's best friend, <laughs> AKA stalker, her words not mine, but also mine. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney Shortney, Courtney Shepard, whatever you want to refer to her as. This woman, y'all, I 
can't. I'll start this off by saying that out of all the people we've profiled in this series, I think that Courtney is the most genuine when it comes to her feelings about losing Jesse Lee. Is she cuckoo bananas? Yes, absolutely. Did she take actions that impeded Jesse Lee's estate from being distributed to its rightful heirs? Yes. But did she actually love and care about Jesse Lee? Yeah, I really think that she did. I think she genuinely misses her friend. And it is pretty sad to watch. So from what I understand, Courtney became oddly obsessed with Jessie Lee Ward, going so far to call herself a stalker, as I've shown you so far in this video. And I was constantly pulled and drawn to Jessie Lee's energy. And I thought, oh, everyone feels that way. And I remember whenever she went into her first new company and you know, like, people talked and they said things in a negative way and my outlook, my perspective was, there's always three sides to every story. So I wanna get to know hers and so I followed silently. I got to see her as this influencer before influencers were a thing and get to know her and follow her by her posting online, like I was stalking her. And then I got to know her as a person. And so I have this, this really unique perspective that I started off as someone who was following a person online and then I built not only a friendship but you know into a, a we became family and best friends and and so much more to that so many some just a much deeper connection through the process. Courtney joined under Jesse Lee when she was in Mo Dare and then Jesse Lee ended up getting fired from Mo Dare and that's when she jumped ship to prove it, and of course, obviously, Courtney made the move with her. She followed Jesse Lee, and then she basically never stopped. <laughs> Throughout her time in Jesse Lee's life, she was never far behind her, like some kind of less successful and less charismatic shadow. She seemed to compete with everyone else in Jesse Lee's inner circle to get as close to her as possible, and her persistence in obsessive idolation of Jesse Lee turned into a blossoming best friendship. She made Jesse Lee the godmother to her children. Courtney was the leech hanging off of Jesse Lee's left butt cheek. And when Jesse Lee passed, Courtney lost what little was left of her sanity. But don't worry, she made out like a bandit. First of all, of course, I do want to point out that Courtney was among the many people who we saw on Instagram stories shaking up ketones and drinking ketones while talking about and or crying about Jesse Lee. I'm finally getting some sleep. Just like... I stayed there late and then some last minute things I had to go to my house first. So I'm at hers, Jesse Lee's. Um, overall, overall as the day. Um, it was a good day and that was from her mouth. So um, she's getting stronger. She already is. And she knows what to do. Like her body knows what to do. Fall. We're prepared for this and we're strong together. So thank you for those of you who are gonna be praying. I appreciate you. For those of you who have her number, please just don't text her, okay? Just comment and pray. Love you all. Good night. So Joshua just brought me this. I said, are you making me do my mix up? And he said, yes. Oh, it's a great day to have a great day. I always start with that, but here we are. And I said, that's her favorite flavor. And he goes, I know. Mm. Yesterday it was so slow. I was just so slow, I finally slept. <clears throat> I don't feel the need to make a post yet, but it'll come. Classic using trauma to sell your MLM product behavior here. We see it all the time. Courtney is not the only person to have done this when Jesse Lee passed away. She's just one of the many. And there are multiple commenters on Reddit that would claim that Jesse Lee would stack new customers of hers 
aka new recruits of hers, under Courtney to help build her business. Of course, in turn, this would also benefit Jessie Lee's organization as well. Helping people underneath her promote would turn into promoting herself, since Courtney was a direct recruit of hers. And I know my friend that, you know, I've featured in a few of these videos, Aaron B's, she was also a direct recruit of Jessie Lee, and she says she's personally able to confirm this to be the case. If that's true, I mean, Courtney had a lot to gain from being best friends with Jessie Lee Ward, just in that way alone. If she was getting paid out in commissions and rank advancements and bonuses and trips and whatever else is in Prove It's compensation plan, which I'm sure there's some other weird bonuses and stuff, there's a lot of money that Courtney received from simply being close to Jessie Lee. So as you may imagine, Jessie Lee's death hit Courtney pretty hard. I mean, it hit a lot of people hard. One of her followers got their entire body basically covered in Jessie Lee tattoos. Yeah, not just one memorial tattoo, but all over this person's body. Many of her followers started saying WWJLD <laughs> and making bracelets that they wear all the time to remind themselves to ask themselves during the hard times, what would Jesse Lee do? But Courtney's reaction to the death was at a much more concerning level. Within a few days after the death, Courtney began saying that Jesse Lee was speaking through her daughter. This video was posted to Reddit. It was already cropped weird, presumably to crop out her daughter, so I'm sorry for the weird orientation. It's the best we got because Courtney deleted this live from her social media, but yeah, she really said this. And I feel as though <clears throat> Jessie Lee is speaking through, if I'm being totally honest, because she won't let up. She's literally forcing me to be live. <laughs> Which, do you feel like that's what Jessie Lee would do? Yeah, she is kind of bossy. At times, she claimed that Jessie Lee was speaking through her, as seen in this comment she left on Ed Milet's death announcement. She writes, She did call you dad. You have no idea how much you have truly meant to her, and I know she'll speak through me to you to share what is English. Now, there is a Reddit account that claims to be Jessie Lee Ward's mom. Now, obviously, skepticism is healthy to practice here. So, of course, take all this with a grain of salt, but this person's comment history does appear as though whoever this person is does have some kind of insider information, and they were commenting regularly on this subreddit up until recently. To be fair, the Jesse Lee Ward subreddit is basically just people talking about all of the people we've talked about in this video and kind of chronicling how messed up they are in the wake of Jesse Lee's death. So it makes sense why maybe this profile slowed down a bit and they don't post so much anymore. But one of the most wild things to come out of this account is that they claim that Courtney attempted to go to the funeral home and claim Jessie Lee's ashes for herself unsuccessfully, mind you. And I will say that I had this story verified to me through other people who have other trustworthy sources who are not Jessie Lee's mom. Those sources had passed along some verifiably correct information in the past and they were able to verify that Courtney did in fact show up to the funeral home to try to get the ashes. So I am inclined to believe this story. The alleged Jessie Lee's mom profile posted a few comments about this on the subreddit but this one is probably the most straightforward. This woman is ill, referring to Courtney. She went to the funeral home and claimed to be the executor of the will and wanted JLW's ashes. Now her family has to wait for a court order to get them. She is just not right. She also says that the funeral home thankfully did not release the ashes to Courtney, but they also had allegedly refused to hand the ashes over to anyone without a court order because of this. The commenter says, the funeral home is stuck in between. C.S. Courtney Shepard claimed to be the executor. She is not. The funeral home is not going to make the decision on their own and wants a court order. So I just want to insert a clip of Aaron B's in DC talking about this situation too, since they have great commentary on it. But allegedly, Courtney here tried to allegedly pick up Jesse Lee's ashes. Jesse Lee's parents are both very much al alive and well. Why? would she think that she was entitled to her ashes? And that is the thing in all of this, since Jessie Lee's passing, that will send me through the roof, is the lack of respect for the family outside 
of the MLM cult, and I'm gonna call it that. If you remove the MLM culty aspects of all of this, that wouldn't happen. A best friend would not try to go pick up the ashes of their deceased best friend and think that it was okay. That's not normal behavior, in my opinion. I don't know how you get from maybe having a more reasonable response to grief to getting where in my, where Courtney is and saying, yeah, the right decision is trying to pick up the ashes of someone that I'm not related to. I don't know how you get there. I just can't imagine the thought process like you've mentioned. Like, how do we get to that point? And then getting in the car and then driving over to wherever her ashes were, walking in and saying, oh, I'm here to pick up Jesse Lee's ashes. And also, let me say, I can't imagine what Jesse Lee's family is having to deal with. Jesse Lee was such a, a public figure, and now all of this is public because she was such a public figure, and it's like the level of disrespect from, I'm gonna say, people in the empire when it came when it comes to Jesse Lee's family is atrocious to me. You said disrespect too, and I think delusion and dis disrespect. I think it's wild. Imagine having the audacity to believe that your stalker ass is more deserving of your dead friend's ashes than her own family, to the point where now the grieving family can't even retrieve the ashes. One can only hope that this mix-up has been sorted out by now, just for the sake of Jesse Lee's family, because I can't imagine how hurtful it has been for them to go through something like this, but I don't have confirmation about whether or not that's been sorted out. I'm not sure. One curious thing I do want to point out, though, is how Courtney's grandfather allegedly used to be an undertaker, which is basically just a mortician. I had to Google it. It's just another name for a mortician from what I understand. They make funeral arrangements and prepare bodies for burial or cremation. My grandpa was an undertaker. You know, if people pass away, that was where he would come from the funeral home. He worked for the funeral home for the morgue. Like he was this, this person that would come and take the person that you lost and then take them wherever they're supposed to go. If they're being cremated or if they're, you know, being, you know, uh, autopsies, etc. Like he takes them exactly where they're supposed to go. Um, and so I was, I was in the funeral home from as long as I can remember until my grandpa, even my stepdad worked for them until my grandpa like retired. So Courtney actually has spent more time in a funeral home than the average person can say they have. I could elaborate on this, but I'm just gonna put in a clip of Aaron B's talking about it because I think she says it best. She's familiar with the processes of taking a loved one to be cremated or whatnot and picking up the ashes and probably somewhat familiar with the legality of that. And she still allegedly went to pick up the ashes of Jesse Lee, thinking she was entitled to them, even though legally she was not entitled to them. I... <laughs> I don't even... I don't even know. The fact that apparently she has so much experience in spending so much time at the funeral home, and then to end up here. You know, you can think like, Maybe Courtney was just excited and she just want she was acting on uh, without in or inhibition or whatever and going and doing things based off of her emotions. But she has a allegedly, according to her, a whole experience of hanging out at funeral homes. So she should know better. Imagine her showing up and going, Oh I'm, no, it's fine. I'm the best friend. This whole thing implies, to me anyway, in my opinion, that Courtney was using her knowledge of funeral homes and cremation and picking up ashes and everything like that. She was using it to her advantage here, thinking that she somehow knew better than Jesse Lee's family. And she's like, oh yeah, I can just get away with taking these ashes for myself. I mean, the audacity, right? I would love to hear her elaborate on her thought process here. Although I'm sure we'll never get that kind of elaboration. We'll probably never hear her side of this because I can imagine it's just extremely embarrassing for her. But so I reached out to Anti MLM. She runs an anti MLM TikTok and Instagram account. It's really great stuff. I highly recommend checking her out. But she's also a licensed funeral director in Ontario, Canada. So I wanted to pick her brain about 
all of this and maybe get some insight from her as a professional. Obviously, this is all speculation, but I just find it so wildly interesting to hear what Auntie MLM has to say about this kind of stuff since she is a professional in the field. She gave me permission to share her response, so I'm just gonna play them for you. Now, I'm in Canada. I'm in Ontario, but I think it's fair to say across the board that the line of next of kin, the line of succession is legal. You know, there's no will in place. And yes, like her mother, father are legal next of kin. So whoever paid for the funeral would be the purchaser, would be on the contract. So they would be entitled to the ashes. So if she came in, they would be like, okay, well, like, let me see some ID before we release it. There wouldn't be any notes on the file saying that it could be released to her. They may have even made a phone call. The funeral home would have been held accountable for it. And there, we're not going to be held accountable for it. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to be held up in the courts. Like, we understand confidentiality, the privacies, all the things. So... She didn't pay for the funeral. She's not the legal next of kin. She's not the executor. She has absolutely no entitlement to the remains and they would have been denied to her and she would have been probably just like stood there looked at until she walked out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it would have been very embarrassing for her, I'm sure. The fact that her grandfather was a funeral director or in the industry in any capacity. The fact that she would even think for a moment she could get away with that is insulting. It's insulting to the intelligence of the funeral staff. Like, get the hell out of here, in my opinion. So because of this, and likely other reasons, like how Courtney has no social awareness at all, the family told her that she could not come to the funeral. They told her that if she showed up, she would be escorted out. Go figure, if you try to steal someone's ashes, the family's not gonna want you at her funeral. <laughs> Who knew? And for those of you that are gonna ask, I was literally asked not to come to the to the funeral service, which really broke my heart. Um, and I had multiple tell people tell me just to go, but that's just not who I am. I was asked to not be there. Um, it is only for close friends and family. So I will not be there. Um, so instead I will be distracting myself. I kind of forgot that when I started talking. Give me a second. So then because of this, Courtney took it upon herself to arrange her own celebration of life. And she invited all of her MLM buddies to be there since none of them were allowed at the funeral. <laughs> and at this celebration of life, they literally just like meditated together. <laughs> Close your eyes and allow her to speak to you. Thank you. and listen to Jessie Lee's trainings and like her motivational speeches and stuff. Like you can't make this up. Let's do this exercise together. You guys ready? All right. Healing, strengthening, the best parts of you, your courage, your love, your passion, your way out again. And despite how many people were there, Courtney, for some reason, was unable to find anyone to watch her child while she gave a 20 minute long eulogy of her best friend. Her life required numerous unseen and unknown sacrifices. And I witnessed almost a decade from a complete outside <laughs> to building a deep, meaningful relationship as the best friend of Jesse Lee. Speakers at this event also included Sasha and Mateo, who were two of her best friends, Carissa, who was her assistant, Brian Underwood, her upline Lisa Grossman, Avi Ram, and a few more network marketing people who knew her. I mean, there were some nice sentiments, but it's very telling why these people were not allowed at the family's funeral. I'm pretty sure Avi Ram got to attend the actual funeral, but that was it. This thing that Courtney put together was kind of like the rejects party. You know, what's interesting though is how Ed Milet and Eric Worre didn't show up. You know, she called Ed Milet dad, but he just couldn't be bothered to attend. Time freedom, anybody? Or did they just not care? Anyway, so 
more Courtney shenanigans. Yeah, it keeps getting worse. One of the biggest topics of conversation when you're scrolling through Jesse Lee Ward's subreddit is who has Jesse Lee's dogs? I think we can all agree that she loved these dogs. Their names are Kumba Charles and Wookie, but who ended up taking these dogs? Well, it was a mystery for a long time. So like I was saying before, Avi Ram lived in that apartment for two and a half months after she died, but the dogs weren't there. The commenter who claimed to be Jesse Lee's mom, which again, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but she said that the dogs were part of her estate. So therefore Avi Ram and Courtney, and I guess any of her MLM friends had no legal right to have the dogs. But when have legal rights ever stopped Courtney from taking things that belong to Jesse Lee. <laughs> Four days after Jesse Lee's passing, Courtney said this on a live stream. They, Jesse Lee gave us the dogs, but we'll, we'll always have joint custody with Aviram just because um, I know I personally wouldn't have it any other way and I, neither would he, so. The thing is that no one was posting updates or pictures of the dogs after Jesse Lee's passing. This is odd because Jesse Lee's audience loved the dogs. They're clout magnets for whoever had them. So why did the post stop? People would ask friends of Jesse Lee, you know, people who were kept in Jesse Lee's inner circle about the dogs. And all anyone ever said was cryptic stuff like they're loved and they're well taken care of. People suspected that Courtney had the dogs for months, but when people would approach her about it, she would get really weird, as if she was hiding something. Until her own daughter spilled the beans. Would Jesse Lee be happy about where her dogs are? Absolutely. Yep. They are where she wanted them. Yes, with that. And I I like me. I'm cute. Looking at the hotel, it doesn't make sense. Oh, yes. He didn't come this way, did he? Keep She's on slowly. guessing, and uh. who guesses first gets 10 points. Oh, I can Who guesses first gets 10 points. So, Courtney had the dogs the whole time, but she was hiding it. Now, Reddit's suspicion is that she knew they legally belonged to the family, but she took them anyway, and then she was trying to hide it. Well, now the word is out, and she doesn't care that people know that she has the dogs now. And I guess her husband is some Twitch streamer gamer bro. Side note, he calls himself Sniper Murderer with threes instead of E's, so he's probably an insufferable edgelord. Anyway, Courtney had no issue posting this picture of his setup, where both Kumba and Wookie can be seen. And Wookie is looking pretty skinny, so that can't be good. But that is not the only thing of Jesse Lee's that Courtney has claimed for herself. Yeah, Courtney took Jesse Lee's clothes, dude. Shout out to the people of Reddit who put these side by side comparisons together. I mean, this is honestly disturbing. We know that none of Jesse Lee's belongings were willed to Courtney. She allegedly has no legal right to any of this stuff. And given the circumstances of their relationship, Jesse Lee's death, and the aftermath, the fact that she's wearing her dead friend's entire wardrobe is just bizarre. These are nice clothes too, obviously, since it was Jesse Lee. I believe that usually the family who this stuff, you know, legally belongs to would normally opt to have an estate sale. I mean, they'd probably go through all of her stuff and keep whatever it is they want. And then things like clothes and stuff would usually like make its way to an estate sale. So by Courtney having Jesse Lee's wardrobe, as far as I'm concerned, she's just straight up stealing the clothes from the family that they could have probably resold for a nice profit. And that is money that they probably need to cover all those probate court costs. But sure, wear your dead friend's clothes, Courtney. Like it's so disrespectful. Hey, editing Savannah here. I forgot to include this part in my script, but I simply could not leave it out. So there's been some suspicious activity on Jesse Lee's Instagram account. What I'm showing on screen now is Jesse Lee's Social Blade. Social Blade is a service that lets you see how many followers an account has. It shows you how many people they're following and it lists the gains and losses day by day. Now, I'll admit that there might be another explanation for all of this, but Jesse Lee's Instagram account has been caught following and unfollowing people. While it's possible that this might be people deactivating and reactivating their accounts, 
It's odd that her following count varies day by day. And even on Saturday, March 2nd, not only did her account randomly gain over 2,400 followers, but her account started following three people. Now, we know that Courtney has access to Jesse Lee's social media accounts because she told Eric Worre that she would give him access so that he could upload his videos of her to her YouTube channel. She also posted a rest in joy post after she passed away. And now this is all just speculation, but is Courtney using Jesse Lee's Instagram account, which by the way, has over 350,000 followers. What would be her reasoning? Is she prospecting or is this some other morbid form of personal gain? And can you imagine getting a follow request from someone who's been dead for six months? The whole thing is bizarre. And again, I don't know if this activity is Courtney's doing, maybe it's someone else, maybe there are other explanations, but the weird part to me is the day where her account started following three people. That is super suspicious and all I can say is I hope there's another explanation here. Finally though, in a recent update, here's where we're gonna end by circling back around to what I was talking about earlier. Remember when I said that Prove It was moving Jesse Lee's downline around? Well, guess who hit rank 10? Yeah, Courtney just did. But how is that even possible? Reports show that for the months of January and February that she recruited zero people. She seems to have had no growth to her business. So how did she achieve such a huge promotion? Well, because of Jesse Lee's death, of course. It seems like Prove It generously gave Courtney a good chunk of the empire, and now she's gone up in rank. Thanks, Jesse Lee. <laughs> One Reddit commenter shared this screenshot that they claim comes from an email they received from Prove It. It says, we are reaching out regarding your account placement. Are you wanting to change sponsors? We are here to assist you with a seamless sponsor change. To complete a sponsor change, you must meet the following requirements. Must be personally enrolled and still direct slash frontline to Jesse Lee. New requested sponsor must reside within the Jesse Lee organization. Requests must be submitted for review by February 28th. Requests outside of the above requirements can be submitted and will be considered. However, they're not guaranteed. Example, people who JL placed under someone else. So it seems like Jesse Lee's downline was given 30 days to choose a new upline, which had to be someone who was in Jesse Lee's downline to begin with. Courtney was a direct recruit in Jesse Lee's stalker, I mean, best friend. And it makes sense that so many of the people just went with Courtney. She seems like the most obvious choice. Now, I'm not an expert on Prove It's compensation plan, but usually in MLMs, they'll say this is their paid as rank, meaning they usually will get higher payouts of commission or they get to like collect commissions from deeper levels of their downline than people at lower ranks, or there's sometimes like new bonuses and stuff like that. So I'm sure she probably has made more money from this promotion, but even if she didn't, even if she wasn't making any extra money from now being a rank 10 and prove it, the prestige and the fame that somebody gets is enough to at least open some new doors, open some new opportunities to Courtney in the future. Like I mentioned earlier too, Jesse Lee was allegedly responsible for building a lot of Courtney's business, you know, while she was alive. And even after her death now, Courtney is still reaping the benefits in Prove It from being so closely involved with Jesse Lee. Now that is all I have, I'm pretty sure. There's just so much if I miss something, like I'm sorry. There's even to this day still updates coming out about all this. You know, Jesse Lee passed away back in September and the fact that we are still getting new updates about what's happening with her estate, who gained what from being closely involved with her, what money went where, like there's still so much going on about this. So, I mean, if it warrants another update video, I will make it. If not, I think I covered a big bulk of the ongoings here. So thank you for making it this far. And now we have to thank my patrons and my members, guys. The list of names I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club and sometimes even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to join our YouTube memberships. So whatever platform you wanna join on works for me if it works for you. And with 
with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Jacqueline Nutton, Kessie Drew, KJ Barnes, Leanne, Sarah Simi, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, Ray, AJC, Martine Hubert, Love to Be Evil, Amber Price, Baby Pink Pearl, Alice Wagner, LaSalle Story, Mother Dragon 82, Fallon Lowry, Hannah, Jessica Billhart, Emion, and Auntie Lou. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and for being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this entire series if you have. And if you haven't, make sure you go back and watch the previous three installments here. This one's probably going to end up being the longest one. So don't worry. If you're somehow still here, you <laughs> probably will be able to sit through the other ones as well. So I appreciate all the love and support that's come to me through making this series. So yeah, I guess I will see you all later. Okay, bye. <laughs>